Well, to talk about compensating college athletes, I'm joined now by Mike Baco. He's sports editor at DailyNational.com. Welcome, as always. Thank you, Rochelle. So for an international audience, first, break down the structure of the NCAA and how it brings in different streams of revenue. Sure. So the biggest stream of revenue is the hundreds of millions of dollars and billions of dollars of TV revenue. So when you look at the two main money makers for the NCAA, that really su helps support almost every other uh, sport. You have NCAA football and NCAA basketball. So over a billion dollars in TV revenue coming in from football, almost $800 million coming in from basketball. So that goes to the conferences, that goes to the schools, that goes to the athletic budget. So when you're thinking about the men's lacrosse team at, uh, at a school on the Eastern Seaboard, or you're thinking about the women's softball team that might not bring in as much revenue, so much of that is floated by the NCAA football and NCAA basketball. So then who tends to get the lion's share of this? The biggest share goes to the biggest schools and the, and the schools that continue to win. So you look at the big conferences, the Southeastern Conference, the SEC, the likes of Alabama, Louisiana State, schools of that nature, the Big Ten, the, the traditional powerhouses like Penn State, Ohio State, Michigan. You look at the, the Pac-10 with traditional schools like USC, UCLA, Stanford, schools of that nature. And then, of course, you think about other schools that bring in their own streams of revenue, like the University of Texas, the biggest moneymaker in all of college sports. Not only are they bringing in revenue from the conferences that they're in, but also they have their own network. They have a partnership with ESPN that brings in tens of millions of dollars a year as well. So now let's get to this issue of student athletes and their pay. What are the arguments for and against athletes getting a cut of this very lucrative business? Well, the biggest argument for many years and many decades since the inception of the NCAA was that they were getting a free education. If you think about it from some of these schools, you're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars in free education. But what are they bringing to the table? If it wasn't for these student athletes, you wouldn't have that ticket revenue. You wouldn't have the broadcast deals. And when you certainly in the last couple of decades when the exponential growth has come in terms of TV deals, coaches' salaries, endorsement deals for those uh, coaches as well. You look at the sidelines and guys like Mike Krzyzewski, soon to be retiring Duke basketball coach, making tens of millions of dollars a year while his, while his players on the court are not making anything. So the breaking point came when uh, video games started having the likenesses of players. They were selling the, li the jerseys of players with their names on their back. None of these athletes were getting any of this money. So it was a breaking point. Certainly some of the lawsuits, Ed O'Bannon suing because of his likeness on the NCAA basketball game, other lawsuits coming. And then certainly just thinking about all of the under the table money that was going to some of these recruits, certainly major recruiting scandals over the years. It just built and built and built in this NCAA. Uh, the, the Supreme Court case was the tipping point. So then break down the details then of the significance of this NCAA panel recommendation and this upcoming decision. Sure. So basically what they're saying is that athletes are not going to be paid from the universities, but they could profit off their likeness. So whether that be appearances, whether that be selling their autographs. A few years ago, Heisman Trophy winner Johnny Menzel got into hot water for selling his autograph to collectors. Uh, so many athletes now have presence on social media. They can now become endorsers on social media, paid posts and things of that nature. So that's what this ruling really opens the door for, is that for the athletes themselves to hire agents and to profit off their likeness and their name and their appearances and, and things of that nature. So it's not the schools paying them, it's the athletes getting endorsement deals. So then how does that align with what, with what several states are already planning in terms of the sort of name, image, likeness rules? Yeah, it's really become an arms race in terms of recruiting. When you look at the states that were at the forefront of this, they're really the biggest states where college sports rules. Alabama, Texas, Ohio, Louisiana. Just today, the governor of Illinois, in his speech signing this bill into law, was talking about the recruiting wars and saying that Illinois is open for business. If you're thinking about going to another state, to another school, where you might not be able to profit off your likeness, don't go to those schools, come to a school in Illinois. So it's really become an arms race and at the forefront, obviously, the schools and the states where their major money makers, like in Alabama, the University of Alabama football team with Nick Saban, their head coach, making tens of millions of dollars a year and winning national championships, there's hundreds of millions of dollars at stake for these universities. So then in terms of reaction then, if you compare the reactions from the college institutions, the student athletes, as well as professional athletes, what are they thinking about these developments? 
I think they're, they they love this development. Now you're looking at a star quarterback or a player on the basketball team, the two highest profile sports being able to make money. But if you think about it trickling down to other sports, if you're a niche player in a sport like, say, gymnastics or softball or lacrosse, and you have a following with a specific set of people, you are not going to be paid by the university. That was never going to happen. So now you're able to profit off your likeness. Maybe it's a couple thousands of dollars. Maybe it's a couple hundreds of dollars. Maybe the star quarterback for the national championship football team is making hundreds of thousands of dollars, but it levels the playing field and allows players, popular players, to make money off of their likeness. So then in terms of managing these changes, then just very quickly, how should universities better prepare these student athletes, not just for ownership of their brands, but perhaps these new finances coming in? Right, exactly. And that's really the, not the loophole in this, but the uh, looking around the corner, that's where you could get some unsavory characters coming in. And obviously as they go on now, advising players and taking advantage of them. So can universities create an infrastructure where they educate their athletes? That's really going to be where we see some of these hurdles and stumbles along the way.